Good evening. Hello, I'm Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, and I'm so honored that Ron Galpern, our outstanding city controller and my dear friend, came to me with this opportunity to speak to the Temple Akiba congregation and to recognize Rabbi Zachary Shapiro for his 10 years of dedicated service to this congregation and this city. All of you who know and worship with Rabbi Shapiro don't need me to attest to the character of this man. You have been the first-hand beneficiaries of his spiritual guidance and his life lessons. You've witnessed his tireless work as an educator enriching the lives of young children. And if that weren't enough, he has shared his gifts as a composer to renew and re-energize the Temple Akiba music program. Rabbi Shapiro is also the author of children's books to boot. I read them to my own daughter. And Temple Akiba has a true Renaissance rabbi. And while technically Temple Akiba is located just over the border in Culver City, his leadership and talents are certainly felt throughout our city of angels. So Rabbi, on behalf of a grateful city, it is my pleasure on this occasion to stand with everyone here today in thanking you for 10 years of service to this community, and we look forward to the years ahead. Mazel tov, my friend. I see you're a big fan of aviation. Why did you want to become a rabbi? I knew I wanted to become a rabbi from the time I was around 11 years old. I come from a long line of Reformed Jews. My mother, my grandfather, my great-grandfather were all part, part of a Reformed congregation. And when I was about 11, they sent me to a summer camp called Olin Sang Ruby. And there were these young rabbis playing guitar, having such a great time. And I came home from camp and I said, Mom, Dad, I think I want to be a rabbi. He told us he wanted to become a rabbi and it just seemed Gee whiz, that, that should work for him, you know, that it just seemed right for him. It was this life passion combined with music, combined with education, that brought me on the path to becoming a rabbi. I went to Colby College in Waterville, Maine. I majored in Spanish. My rabbis that I grew up with in Boston, they always said to me, if you want to be a rabbi, get a good, well-rounded liberal arts education. You'll learn the rest later on in college, he was in a group called Broadway Musical Review, and he did a lot of singing and performing there. Again, sort of a good preparation for being a rabbi, where you're up in front of a congregation all the time and interacting. So I went to college knowing that I would probably be a rabbi. I also thought maybe I'd run an airport, but I decided I wanted to become a rabbi instead. And I graduated Colby College, majored in Spanish. And within three weeks of graduation, I was on a plane to Jerusalem for my first year of rabbinical school at the Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion. I heard that most people who become rabbis, you know, they graduate from college, they spend a few years kind of finding themselves and, you know, waiting for this calling. And Zach just knew. We were young people who were curious about the world, curious about people, curious about the Jewish future, and uh, together through study, through friendship, through questioning and challenging, uh, and practicing giving sermons and how to read the Torah, we did this thing called making ourselves into rabbis. Shortly after I became uh, uh, president, uh, Rabbi uh, Maller announced his retirement after 39 years. Now, uh, I've tried very hard not to take those two events personally. Eleven years ago, I was asked to be on the Rabbinic Search Committee after Rabbi Alan Maller had announced that he was going to be leaving the synagogue after almost 40 years. I felt that was going to be a very daunting task in order to find someone to replace him. That was until I interviewed Rabbi Zach Shapiro. When he walked into the interview room with his guitar, uh, and sat down and, and we chatted, uh, the committee and, 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 and Rabbi Shapiro. Um, it uh, was interesting because it became unclear to me whether it was Temple Akiba that had found Rabbi Shapiro or Rabbi Shapiro that had found Temple Akiba. Even when I was back at University Synagogue, when I first came to Los Angeles, I knew early on that Temple Akiba is where I eventually wanted to land. There was a reputation here of being a down-to-earth, Hamish, yet forward-thinking and eclectic place. Rabbi Shapiro took out his guitar and played a song, and for any of us who had ever heard Rabbi Maller sing in the past, we knew we had found our rabbi. 
he has uh, brought a lot of uh, uh, new faces into temple and the old faces back into temple. He has uh, helped us uh, rejuvenate our uh, excitement with our reconstruction and his leadership and dedication to success. He has helped my family through happy times and sad times, and I have felt that he has always been there for us whenever we've needed him. It wasn't too long after meeting Rabbi Zach that I knew he was the real deal. There wasn't a lot of ego coming forth. It was a lot of great listening, you know, getting to know you and who you are and hearing your joy or your pain or what was going on with you. Uh, about 10 years ago, my wife and I had our first child. And as we were preparing for her baby naming that Zach was going to officiate at, my mother turned uh, very ill. And it was a difficult period of time for myself and my family. And I wasn't sure as to whether or not we should still continue with the baby naming. And I spoke with Zach, who was preparing to fly out to Philadelphia for the baby naming, and had a long discussion with him. And as, as is his strength, he was a great listener uh, and helped me understand how important it was, both for the tradition, for our, in our Jewish tradition, as well as personally for my family, to, to continue with the joyous occasion, even in light of the difficult times that we were facing with my mother's illness. Rabbi Shapiro is a rabbi's rabbi, literally. I remember when I was in my fifth year of rabbinical school, I was struggling with some of the complexities of becoming a rabbi and thinking about my career. I called Rabbi Shapiro, hoping in the next few weeks I might get some time on his calendar. His immediate response? Drive over here and walk Daisy with me. I believe there was a synagogue fundraiser with a, with a live auction and someone had this poodle, this baby poodle that was in the auction. And Zach thought, oh, I'll bid on her and see what happens. Well, apparently if, if the rabbi live bids on something, no one bids against them. <laughs> so, so he, I think, was the first and only bid for Daisy. And the next thing you know, he showed up at my house and Daisy's in the little cute basket that she came in. And he said, what do I do now? <laughs> All right, full disclosure. Every week you say, this is my favorite Torah portion. We won't tell anyone. What really is your favorite portion? I'll tell you. It's the Torah portion when God says something to that prophet, and then that prophet does something pretty amazing, and then the Israelites do something like they complain about something, and then God talks some more. Hello, I'm Alan Freeling. Along with all of you, Lori and I want to send our loving best wishes to Zach as he celebrates his 10th anniversary here at Temple Akiva. We've been together since the beginning of his career as a rabbi, and we're so proud of what he accomplished at University Synagogue, and now what he's accomplished here at his own congregation. Mazel tov, Rabbi Zach Shapiro. It's your friend, Rabbi Denise Ager, wanting to salute you on this special occasion of celebrating your 10th anniversary at Temple Akiva. My, how time flies. We're so excited to be with you tonight. And on behalf of the Central Conference of American Rabbis, salute you and Temple Akiva for all the great partnership that you've had with each other in creating a vibrant and wonderful community here in Culver City. Mazel Tov Zach on 10 years at Temple Akiva the 10 best years of our lives. I could not be luckier than to be married to Zach Shapiro. I remember the first time I met him, which is now more than 18 years ago, actually within about 10 seconds, I decided that he was the one. Now mind you, he was dating somebody else at the time, but we got that out of the way. And since then, I have been so fortunate. I remember our first date in which Rabbi Zach said, well, my mission in life is to bring goodness into the world. And I thought, he's either the biggest Pollyanna I've ever met or the most amazing person I've ever met. Turns out, actually, he's both. I answered the question about my favorite tour portion a little bit tongue-in-cheek. But there's another question that goes beyond this, and that is, do you have a favorite phrase from the Torah? And I think the phrase is a, t 
term called Ezer Kenegdo, which is from the Garden of Eden story. And it's what Adam and Eve are one to the other. And it literally means a, a partner who's across from you. I'm so lucky in my life to have as my Ezer Kenegdo, my beloved Ron, who for the past 18 years of our lives together has stood with me, has challenged me, has not only supported me, but also been the Ezer Kenegdo. He's been the one who has, has crossed me and tried to make me be a better person, a better husband, a better rabbi. And so to my beloved Ron, my partner, my spouse, my Ezer Kenegdo, my, my Beshert, thank you for walking hand in hand with me these past 18 years. Thank you for being the most incredible Rebetzin to Temple Akiba. And I love you so very much. And I can't wait for our future together.